2016. Please join us for the pledge. <laughs> Please bow your heads. Heavenly Father, uh, thank you for the spring that is now upon us, even though today is the day that brings the flowers up rather than, rather than makes us warm. Uh, we ask for your wisdom in making decisions that are the best for the citizens of Seneca County, and we ask your blessing on all these students, all the administration, and all the teachers at Calvert High School. We ask this through your name. Amen. Amen. Roll call, please. Commissioner Stacy. Here. Commissioner Zoller. Here. Commissioner Kirshner. Here. We'll have the official signing of the journal, and I'll accept the motion to approve the DVD recording of our previous board session of Tuesday, April 19th, and the written index of that meeting. I'll make a motion that we will approve the uh, second. A motion and a second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Approved. Thank you. Well, good morning. Um, before we continue with the rest of our agenda, I would like to extend a thank you to, to Mr. Coucher as well as Mr. Willman for uh, inviting us to be part as an educational opportunity for all of you students here at Calvert School. Um, we appreciate uh, the accommodations being made to allow us to be here and also to extend an invite to some of our fellow elected officials and department heads that have joined us in, at the conclusion of our meeting um, they'll have the opportunity to introduce themselves to you, as well as to tell you a little bit about the, the responsibilities that they carry out and are responsible for for the county. And so we will continue with our meeting at this time. Are there any adjustments to the printed agenda? Anything we need to add that anybody has? I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, the meeting I had with the Board of Elections to be toured the facility. And I think that I'd at least, at least like to mention this, and I think it's noteworthy, that two of your county commissioners are Calvert alumnus. Holly, I'm not sure where you're from. <laughs> we won't tell you when, but yes, we are. <laughs> All right, anything else to add? Under old business, let's begin with that, the uh, Board of Elections, so Commissioner Zoller. Yeah, uh, we, uh, we toured the Hope Roy facility, uh, it was a Tuesday. Um, we had a contractor there, there was uh, two of the members of the Board of the Board of Elections, there was the uh, director and deputy director there, and as we toured the facility, and, and there was some some understanding from their part, and I would have to also say from my part too, that, that the thought process was that if the Hoperoy facility is ADA accessible and it is financially feasible to renovate that, that the Board of Elections, and I also have to say myself too, that I was under the impression it was going to include the Hoperoy facility and the Board of Elections. But I have to say, after touring the facility, I believe wholeheartedly that the Hope Roy facility is sufficient, more than sufficient for what they need. And there was some, certainly some uh, concerns from uh, from the Board of Election Directors towards that. They felt they needed both of them. I believe that the, the space is, is more than adequate for the Hope Roy facility. So but, uh, right now they're in the process of getting an estimate to make the necessary modifications. And as I've instructed, they need to give that to the Board of Elections for their approval. And then at that point, bring it to us to see if, if we would ultimately approve the financial aspect. But I believe before we can even approve the financial aspect, we're going to need a determination from the state to see if it will be ADA accessible. So that, I believe, is the process we need to go. That, again, realizing there is some a little contentious issues on what facility we're talking about allowing them to have. Well, let, let's go through the numbers, uh, just so everybody's on the same page with this. Uh, this one works? Yeah. You guys hear okay back there? 
You all right? Okay. Good. Uh, the numbers are, in fact, we have Lori Richler, deputy director, is here. So I think we ought to let her weigh in if she wishes to, if that's okay with the chair. Okay. But first of all, the current facility upstairs is 880 square feet, uh, in which the Board of Election now occupies. The facility next to them, uh, immediately to the south of them, is 3,080 square feet. The um, um, space downstairs where the machines, the voting machines are, uh, are in the conference area. Uh, I'm not sure how big that is, somewhere in the range of 2,000. Okay. And again, just so we're all on the same page, we assume that those machines will stay down there because all the wiring, etc., has been done for that. Or so. Okay. So, we have approximately 2,000 square feet downstairs for the machines and conference area. We would have 3,080 square feet in the new proposed facility, which is, in essence, a little more than three times the current uh, space that they occupy. Uh, are we in agreement that that's where we think uh, we ought to go? The, whole party, the current whole price space and the current uh, area downstairs for the machines? I believe that is that is more than sufficient. So, I don't know if you've toured the facility, but they have a back storage room. What they indicated, indicated to me is they would like to have a training uh, facility, which the back room, which is now the storage facility, could very easily be adapted into a right. I mean, there was a little bit of, I don't want to say miscommunication, but there was, a, there was an understanding on the part of the Board of Watching that they would occupy both, which would be uh, in excess of oh, near 4,000 square feet. It, that is correct. Why don't you weigh in? I was saying that is true. We were under the impression we would continue to keep our um, current location. I do believe our board chairman, um, James Bruce, has concerns about continuing to keep the electronic equipment down in the basement um, should there ever be a flooding issue. So it would actually make us more efficient and better to uh, store our equipment upstairs uh, to make it much easier for us during election times when we have to service that equipment, we have to get it out to use for training purposes. If we have it on the same floor, um, it makes it a much more efficient process for us that are working there. But as a safety factor, I do believe the chairman of the board is concerned about potential flooding. So then that way we can get rid of some space, move it, alleviate some space in the basement for other things that may be pertinent for, for maintenance and other departments. Okay. I think the situation is, at least from what we discussed, is that obviously uh, street level floor, uh, storefront space is a lot more expensive obviously a lot more visible. Uh, and if there were other county offices that could occupy uh, the current uh, Board of Election space that, that only need 800 square feet, it may be a better decision to do that. So I appreciate the concerns regarding flooding, but you know, we do have insurance uh, and we do, as far as I know, there has never been a situation in that area where there has been water. Is anybody aware of that? Uh, and the Board of Elections has been there for how long? Ago? 1913, there was water there. 1913, but, yeah. <laughs> that, that's when you graduated. <laughs> but, but, but I do believe we could resolve the issues that the Board of Election directors have by building just simple shelves so that we could elevate the machines off the floor in, in, the, in okay. the fact that there is a flood. Well, obviously, we need to, yeah, go ahead. I was just saying, with all due respect, some of those pieces of machinery are 70 pounds. Um, so to lift and take those off of shelves is, I mean, I'm, I'm not a little girl, but, <laughs> but it, it's quite a, quite an undertaking. But I do, I do agree. I think we will be able to come to a virtual conclusion that will actually benefit the people who are coming yeah, I mean, we certainly want to make certain that the Board of Elections have plenty of space in which to operate. Our main concern is to make certain that we don't disenfranchise anyone by allowing them to get in uh, a handicap accessible area to do absentee voting if they need to do that, and to also make it accessible for anybody else and visible uh, so that if they, they want to vote and they want to know where the Board of Elections is, this you know, appears to me to be an ideal spot. I think we're very close. Uh, to making a decision about this, and you know, we'll certainly have our disagreements, but I'm, I'm really certain that we'll come up with the, with the, the right solution. If we can get through the joint justice, we can get through this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys, I, I don't want to get the cart ahead of the horse here. You know, once we get a cost and we approve the cost, we, we certainly need to have sign off from uh, 
from Columbus on the ADA Accessibility Act. Because I was there two years ago when the gentleman came and, and he was very critical of the, uh, of the, of the sidewalk out front that he had uh, a, a grade that, that could depend for the issue. So before we start paying, spending taxpayers' money, we need to make sure that that's signed off. How many, uh, how many, how many of the students, uh, seniors, are going to be able to vote this November's election? Why don't you, Lori, why don't you? in the primary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> some, oh, some of you did vote in the primary in March? Super. Lori, why don't you tell them? I know, go ahead and make your point, but tell them what they need to do as far as that. The ballot case is not going to be around, or what they need to do to register. Okay. Very quickly, the ADA, our federal mandates, so um, our contact Brett and General General Secretary of State. I don't think he'll sign off and say, hey, you guys are fantastic, but I think he will be able to give us some guidelines and say, yes, this will work, this will not work. So actually, the state signing off and saying, you guys are going, that probably won't happen because of your federal mandate, but we will certainly get very good clarification and guidance from the Thank you. But in terms of voting, I was going to tell you guys when it's, when it's my turn. Um, the easiest thing to do is come see us down at the Board of Elections. We will walk you through it because it can be kind of an intimidating process when you're younger and you just don't know. But um, the Secretary of State has a website. The Senate County Board of Elections has a website. Um, and I know you guys are all into technology, so it's not real hard to find out. But give us a call or come on down and we'll walk you right through it. And I just, I have to get a few words in on the whole Board of Elections and the state's issue. I just appreciate the cooperation with the Board of Elections and, and is trying to get work through through this. And I know early on, I had the perception too that it was going to be both sides until I uh, brought up the floor plan to look at the square footage of that side because it was a little deceiving with the, with the retail store in there to realize how big that space was. But it is exciting to see what a contractor uh, puts together for addressing their needs and, and fulfilling the missions of the Board of Elections. So. If I could just make it, I, I think it's something else that's interesting is for the students out there. Board of Election, it has to have a director and a deputy director, a Democrat and a Republican. So it's kind of interesting as we look at, at renovating that facility, they have to have two offices, but they're asking to have a window in the middle of it so that the Democrats can see the Republicans, the Republicans can see the Democrats. The political process at work, I get it. <laughs> All right, is there anything else for the purposes of old business? Okay, for under new business, let's begin with the bill vouchers. Yeah, I have bill vouchers. I also have a supplement to the permit appropriations for the revolving loan fund. We're putting $30,024 into the other expenses line. I have a resolution authorizing an amendment to the service agreement with Buckeye T Services. Can everybody hear me okay? I usually don't need a microphone. <laughs> Um, I have a resolution rejecting all bids received April 19, 2016 for the ADA Township Road 138.7.20 pre-stressed box beams. The bids that came in were over the 10% uh, engineering cost, so this will have to be rebid. I have a resolution granting the annexation for the City of Tiffin, a parcel of land be being 60 0.325 acres, plus or minus in Section 26 of Hopewell Township, Seneca County, Ohio. I have a resolution setting time, date, and place to receive sealed requests for qualifications for the construction testing services for the Joint Justice Center. This will be received in our office uh, Tuesday, May 24th at 11 a.m. Those are the resolutions I have. Motion. I will move to accept resolutions. Yeah, I'll second that. The motion and a second to accept the resolutions as presented. Any questions or concerns at this time? What was the point again? What was the date states on the um, May 24th? Qualifications. 11 a.m. Yeah. Which again, I think is noteworthy to the audience out here is when there's a, um, we have to, advertise when there's a bidding process to the county and then we have to set a date and time and then we would open those sealed bids at that specific time. 
No questions or other comments, concerns, call the roll, please. Commissioner Kirshner? Yes. Commissioner Zoller? Yes. Commissioner Stacy. Yes. All approved. Thank you. This lends us to an opportunity for citizens' comments. At this time, is there any citizens who would wish to make a comment? And we do have the recorded cordless mic here so that we make sure students do hear your question if you can't protect loud enough. So at this point in time, is there any comment? I'd like to just explain uh, briefly the uh, annexation matter that uh, the uh, commissioners approved uh, just a minute ago. Um, I serve as the agent for the property owners. Uh, there are three property owners to this property. It is approximately 60 acres. It is bordered by uh, State Route 2, uh, US 224 and property uh, behind Rural King. Uh, the property owners um, would like this property to be annexed to the city of Tiffin. Uh, they uh, have plans for development and have come to the city uh, seeking city support, uh, which the city does support their efforts. In order for the city to uh, help them in any way with uh, development of the property, it needs to be part of the city. And so the uh, property owners um, all of them, 100% of them, uh, wanted to uh, annex. And they can do this following a state procedure that's laid out by the Ohio Revised Code. And just briefly, what the process is, they signed a petition and submitted this to the, uh, to the commissioners. It lays out the legal description of the property, a map that explains the location. It's signed by uh, then all of the owners of the property. There is a expedited procedure in the Revised Code allows this to go through uh, rather simply. Um, and, and the way that works is we file this petition, and then at the next meeting, which is now, the commissioners then, without hearing, approve this. And the reason it is without hearing is that um, years ago, the county commissioners, the Hopewell Township trustees, and the, uh, the city of Tiffin officials, they entered into a cooperative development agreement which laid out an understanding and an agreement regarding what would happen if a property owner, like uh, the petitioners, wanted to be, um, move their property into the city of Pippin. Um, they agree on how to share real estate taxes, how to share hotel uh, taxes. And so they kind of pre-arrange how this might work out, given these kind of cases, so that there should be no controversy. Everything is understood and agreed. So this is the, the, the first step in the process. And the commissioners then did exactly what the statute said that they're supposed to do. They approved this without hearing. Now, in the next process, and you may read about this in the paper, it will be then presented to the uh, city of, uh, of Tiffin, and they then have to wait for a while, but eventually they will pass an ordinance to accept the, the annexation into the city. And eventually, all the papers will be filed with the Sankey County Recorder, and uh, it will be there for public information. And then the property will be a part of the city of Tiffin for all purposes. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Is there anyone else who has something for citizens' comments? Yes, students right here. You'll stand up and state your name. My name is Ethan Alexander Pearson, and I was wondering necessarily what your place is on the elections for president. <laughs> <laughs> Asking all the tough questions this morning. Um, I think Mr. Kirshner would like to go first. <laughs> <laughs> I have a number of friends who support uh, Donald Trump and a number of friends who support Hillary Clinton, and I stick by my friends. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it, it's very, it's a very difficult time to make a decision about that, and you know it's a wonderful country that we're able to uh, read and talk about and understand the issues and decide which side we want to be on. Uh, I think that uh, most folks don't really take a position during the time when it's uh, primary season, um, uh, and, and the. At least at this point, both in the Republican Party and Democratic Party haven't chosen their candidates. So let's wait to see which candidate they choose, and uh, and I'll try to get behind which one we think is the best. I, I have 
have to say that the uh, process has been interesting. How is that for a word of what we've been seeing with the uh, uh, primary for the president, the president of the United States? Um, I have been a long-standing supporter and believe in our governor of the state of Ohio and stand behind Governor Kasich in his endeavors to try to be president. Oh, boy. <laughs> Uh, I've had, you know, I used to think that the whole process was just very different, difficult, very cumbersome. And I've had the opportunity many, many times to travel throughout this world and see many different countries and so forth. And look at the corruption that is in many, many, many different countries around the world and how great this, this country of ours is, the United States of America. And while the process is very cumbersome, and this year it's probably borders on lunacy. Uh, it's, a, it's a good process. So you want me to mute I'm that? So, I mean, it, it, it's very difficult to do, as this person said. The, the process is ongoing, and, and uh, it's, it's our responsibility as uh, citizens of the United States to listen and to phone? reflect on, on the various candidates and so forth and to, make, to ultimately make that selection in, in, the, in the coming months. But I do know this is a great country, and because of some of these things, it keeps us a politician pretty clean and uncorrupt because I've seen a lot of corruption around this world. Uh, and it, 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 it's not just, so the process is right. I'm not sure who the, who the winner is going to be, other than I know we are all, as citizens of the United States, are the ultimate winner. Whoever's in the, the guy in 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, or lady, I'm sorry. Politically correct. Certainly, we're, we're fortunate in the country when we have the freedom of political process we have. Any additional comments? Our questions from the citizens. Oh, come on, give them questions. They need it. <laughs> Where's the qualifications to be a commissioner? So if anyone out there is sure to be a, to, to run for commissioner. Yeah. What are the qualifications to be a commissioner? Need to be a citizen of Seneca County. Registered to vote. Follow your, follow your petition to get the Board of Elections. <laughs> if there's any precedence here, it helps to be a Calvert alumnus, too. <laughs> <laughs> I had to get my plug in there. There you go. All right, if there are no further questions for citizens' comments, we're going to adjourn this meeting, and then we will allow um, all of the elected officials and department heads that are with the county, as well as we have a couple officials with the city. Uh, Mayor Moss is with us, and we've heard already that some of the law director, Brad Howard, if they as well want to join in on that process and um, introduce themselves and, and share a little bit about their responsibilities, we welcome that as well. So, um, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Motion and second to adjourn this meeting. All those in favor say aye. 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 We stay adjourned. Again, thank you um, for the opportunity to